All right, good morning. It is Saturday, and I'm still laying in bed. It's close to 10 o'clock, and it's been such a long time since I've done something like this. I mean, because I normally just get up at 9 o'clock, boom, I'm out of bed. But for some reason, I'm just tired. But let's go hiking today, shall we? I was thinking of going to a place called Snow Lake. Now, if you remember Snow Lake, it was the first place I went snowshoeing, so I'm kind of excited to see what it's going to look like in the spring and summertime. So we have to kind of get there as sooner soon because because apparently we're going to be having some thunderstorms. <laughs> thunderstorms today in the great city of Seattle or Bellevue or whatever. All right, let's get up. Mm. All right, now that I'm kind of awake. I got my hair all pretty. I figured let's make some let's make some breakfast. So actually, I bought this really really tasty pancakes that we're going to make today. Check it out. I'll be making some of that. Power cake, Kodiak cakes with ubi mochi pancake. So this ubi mochi pancake is actually really, really good. I got this at Trader Joe's. And what it ends up doing is you could normally make it by yourself or make it by itself. But I prefer to mix it with like, um, like a pancake mix because it makes it less chewy. If, you are, if you're familiar with mochi, it can, it can be very, very uh, chewy, right? So stupid lighting so if you mix it with like a normal like flour based pancake mix it makes the waffle itself or pancake itself really fluffy plus it's actually very chewy all right let's check it out all right as far as like the pancake mix goes and all that i was thinking let's go it was like should i watch lucifer in the morning mm, let's watch some starcraft instead we're gonna watch some starcraft together okay i feel like i gotta introduce you if you've never watched starcraft before it's a great 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 video game <laughs> tried playing yesterday man I just suck. It's one of those games where if you don't keep up with it, if you don't keep up with StarCraft, you just your skills fade right away. Anyways, last night was uh, it was Korea's. It was the finals in Korea, right? It's called the GSL. If you've never heard of it, Global StarCraft League. And so it was the first season of 2020. They started really late. I mean, it's probably just the COVID-19 and just everything else going on. And yeah, we're gonna be having a Terran versus Terran final. So the finalists are Ty and Kier. And I have no idea who's going to win. They're both really, really fantastic StarCraft players and fantastic Terran players. And one of the nice things about TVT, what Terran versus Terran versus or human versus human, is that the strategy involved, it's so cool how to, it's almost like akin to, are you familiar with the game Go? It's that black and white chess seat, or it's like Chinese chess, I guess, or Japanese, or whatever. You have black and white tiles, and you all, the whole goal is to try to surround your opponent. Right, I think I've gone over this before uh, last time. Anyways, it's a beautiful strategy game, and let's, we're gonna watch it together. You're gonna kind of see. We're gonna see like who's gonna win, like what strategy is gonna be implemented in doing what. All right. So let me finish making pancakes for us, for us, and then yeah, let's do it, my friend. Let's do it. Here you go. Boom. Pancakes one, and I decided to go ahead and make some fresh fruit juice. All right. Let's begin, shall we? All right, it's about to start. So at least just watch one episode with me, okay? Let's just kind of see. We're going to analyze it together. Let's see what is going to happen. Map number one will be on us. Obsidian. Again, this is T.Y. versus Kira. Terran versus Kira. That's funny. When I eat my pancakes, I like to separate my bowls. and like to chop them up into little pieces like a little kid. So that's something I've always been doing. So don't judge me. Don't judge me. Hmm. All right, it started. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, so this guy right here, this blue player, he's been playing since I think they said he was since he was 13 years old. That's so crazy. Imagine that. And I think he's like 22 right now or 23, something like that. And he's been playing, yeah, since a kid. I mean, that's crazy. You're born. Fucking Koreans, man. They're just born to play video games. They're really good. Like, they're really good. Mm. Oh, that's good. So I mix this with papaya. I didn't really measure papaya, beets, and watermelon. That's shit. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. That's good. Here, yeah, let's listen to the commentary together. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, whoever wins the first map is obviously. Oh, I love these guys casting. They're really good casters. I think the game on 
this map isn't necessarily going to lend itself to what the other games on the other maps are going to look like. This map is so exceptionally different because of the size, shape, and spawn uh, location numbers. Uh, I'll be curious to see what they're going to be able to take away from this. Usually, in the best of seven, the first few games uh, are, you know, obviously you're doing whatever you plan and, and practice, but hmm. you're also able to farm information for um, how the other player is playing, how his control seems that day. Uh, does he want to play more standard, or does he want to try to be more creative? Um, but I feel like a game on a map like this doesn't really tell you much about the future, since this map would require such a different approach and play style. Yeah, that's that is a very good point. You're you're definitely right about that. Uh, you know, it's it's a map that can just be played so differently, and already we see kind of an interesting opener here from Ty, even though he gets that first scout off. He actually builds his command center on high ground, which here is not even going to be able to scout with that, unfortunately, uh, as the Reaper pops out. But is that a safety thing? Is that a mind game thing? Uh, either way, it doesn't matter all that much. It just gives Cure a little tiny bit of an edge right here. Huh. Yeah, we see Cure now moving through the main here with his Reaper. It looks like this is going to be pinned down, and eventually, you know, now it is taken out here. Um, I'm curious to see what the right side of the map is, is what role that's going to play here. Mm. You know, when you have positions like this... You know, so this, this player, the blue player that they're showing, uh, not red, but blue, so he's a commentator for the game. And what that means is like when, they're, when other people are playing, he's actually the one casting and analyzing and doing all that as well. So that's actually really, really cool. I mean, imagine like you're playing basketball and you have like the court of famous basketball commentators, right? I guess basketball commentators used to be players, but never at the same time. Right? I mean, obviously, I know it's a little different, but it's cool nonetheless. He's never won his own. He's never won a tournament before, and I'm excited. I, I want him to win. I want the other guy to win too, because both of them have never won. But I think Blue deserves it more. Well, deserves it more. It's such an arbitrary statement because he's been playing for so long. But just like a lot of other people have been playing StarCraft for years too. Anyways, let's keep watching. This is it. This is kind of slow. I know it's a little slow right now, but they're starting to build up their army, they're trying to reposition everything, and yeah, the whole point to try and get a good worker count, right? Because the more economy you have, the faster you can build your army, and the faster you can build a, a lasting army. So, all right, see. Uh oh. Gonna leave all of these workers That's not good. exposed over here. There's yeah. another Hellion coming down here to try to help out in any way possible. It does look like the Hellion and the Banshee will drive away the other two injured Hellions. Mm. That was certainly well done uh, from from Ty, right? Just like he chess. All the units, Just like chess, there, it's all about your opening. How do you open strong, decisive, and what's the word I'm looking for? Sneaky. This, I mean, if you just covered everything up at Ty's base effect, oh, he's playing a Terran Berserk. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. Cool. Is it first dark? Hmm. Like, who, who are we playing? It's funny when we see tech patterns like this introduced into different matchups. Yeah. Where you say, you know, the Battle Cruiser is actually a perfectly good unit. We can just try it over here as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, let's... Remember, it, it's, it's like Hydraling Bane. Remember this? It, yeah. was, it was very strong against Protoss, and they're like, wait a minute. Can you use this against Terran? Oh, my God, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Banshee's going to come through here. I don't believe that uh, Kier is aware yet of the unusual attack coming here from T.Y. Looks like here is even going into Banshee speed, so we might be having some Banshee based mech coming out of it. But with that BC, mm, that's right pretty good. Now, he's getting a lot of SCVs, man. He's getting a lot of SCV kills. Not bad. Not bad. Here's the first battle cruiser out. It will warp over here. Uh oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Not really much to defend. He's going to try to kite that. But Cyclone's good. So this unit is allowed to basically lock onto a specific target and just shoot. And he can basically fall, basically run away while still shooting, which is actually pretty cool. So, so the BC is kind of like the Terran strongest air unit. And he got four kills, which is not bad. Not bad. If he didn't go Cyclone, like let's say there's a tank there, LOL, Tasis. Oh, it would be a complete and total disaster. That is true. To remember is like, you probably heard us talk about this in the TVZs or Battle Cruisers are used, but you can warp in, do damage, and if you get out and repair it, you get so much value out of that because you will get guaranteed kills with a battle cruiser. It just deals damage too quickly. By the way, uh, the Banshee barely not picked off. Uh, and so we're going to see that sent back home here. There's a second battle cruiser that's being made. 
I don't know what the cutoff number is. I know from uh, TVZ we saw sometimes one, sometimes three, sometimes yeah. players kept making them hmm. uh, as we saw the meta evolve and change there. The two uh, Banshees have been taken out, so Kira has no real threats uh, out here, especially as this final nice. Banshee is picked off. But All right, so right now you probably can't see it, but TY, or the guy in blue, is actually kind of losing right now. He's got a stronger army supply, but his work account is almost half. Almost half. The red player's got a third base, which means he's going to get his economy much more quickly, meaning he can get you know, units out much faster, right? Uh, so it's not looking good for blue right now. Not looking good. He kind of went a different route. Normally with TVT, you probably want to go like Marines, Tanks, Medivacs. But he went the... What's the word I'm looking for? Gosh, too early. He went the... The abnormal route of going battle cruisers, which is not something you generally want to do because battle cruisers are slow. They have high health, they have high health units, but they're a little slow. But the only upside is that they can shoot while they're moving. But again, they cutoffs, right? It's always about cutoffs. Would that word cutoff? No. Ugh, God, too early. Anyways. As the game progresses, because there's another one about to pop out. Uh, I guess Yamato cannon. So even uh, the commentators like, well, I don't know what the guy in blue is doing. Like, why are you making battle cruisers? It's not the most optimal uh, tech choice to build. And with the way Red's building his units, he's just gonna counter hard, hard. So Blue's kind of in a bad position right now. Pretty much, except for capital ships, right? So. I mean, if it's like siege tank lines versus siege tank lines, that's that's an old Brood War TVT thing. You just you can Yamato tank. So I think if he keeps them alive over time, 100% they're great. But, like, is he not already so far behind that this is going to be a very difficult game? Uh, it, it does seem like that would be the case here. Now, there's SUVs that have hmm. been pulled with this. There's a chance that TY really feels like he needs to end this right Actually, away. Because he's become so behind that if he doesn't do something immediately... This is a pretty good unit composition for blue because he's got siege tanks, which allows you to shoot at a further distance, and they're really fucking strong. So now he's basically segmenting his units this way, which is really cool. And he's locked his red units here, so... In order for him to come and defend his other base, he's got to go through the tank line, which is... Don't explain it, right? This is pretty good. These tanks are able to push. The Marines can really take quite a bit of damage here and deal some as well. SCV's going to repair these BCs, and he's sitting here waiting for more Yamatos as well. Yeah, it seems like you're... If huh. This is such an interesting build. Holy crap. ...has to end this attack here from TY. Um... <clears throat> and look at this! Look how quickly he's killing off everything in the natural with these PCs. The tanks kind of guarding everything as well. Has to start jumping away though. Here comes another PC, and you can see at uh, the moment that the uh, damage becomes a reality, he can jump away. Wow! What an interesting he needs build strategy. Underneath the battle cruisers, repair is an easy thing to do. There's a bunker about to finish at the natural. This is going to completely cut in half here. There's a few units marooned over to the third base, and there's also a fourth base being taken at further out on the map. And I'll tell you something, man. This is a very, very unique attack that TY came in here. Oh, yeah, it's a unique Kira attack. wasn't really respecting it. I think he didn't appreciate that there were going to be tanks underneath the battle cruisers. Everything has been pulled now <laughs> as Cure is trying to stop and end this attack right here, right now. Oh, my God. The sea chase doing massive, massive damage. Oh, so many wow. CVs are ending up falling here, and the BCs are all still alive. Four of them floating. The Yamato's coming off cooldown as well. And That's it. Blue one. one. Might have done it. He might have broken him. I think with the targeting from the tank sitting. What an interesting build! Here, Holy crap! The fact that all the battle cruisers are still alive and in this game. Uh, we saw so many SCVs pulled there, where now Cure is the one that's behind in workers, despite Ty constantly sending waves and waves of his own workers to reinforce and repair these battle cruisers. None of the battle cruisers have been yeah. killed. That's insane. And now... So basically, blue, blue, the battle cruisers also have a teleport ability where they can just teleport anywhere in the map. You don't even have to have vision. And so basically what happened is once the units started becoming um, damaged, more damaged, you just teleport away and you just have the workers repair the unit. <laughs> ah. Well, I think it's hard to for something that we've never seen. I think Red needs to basically, he needs to change his build, but it's kind of hard because he's kind of stuck in this building composition. I think QI probably came up with this, 
right? He's playing against innovation. Those two going at it, you're going to come up with all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, this was this he finally needs to make Vikings. So what do you think? Line. Really, look at these unit compositions: five tanks, five PCs against seven cyclones. Like, yeah, that sucks. That's not going to work. You know what's really crazy too is this looks like a Starcraft One late game uh, PDT here. <laughs> as far as the composition, yeah, yeah, the tanks, the battle cruisers together with Yamato used to pick off any threats from afar, while the siege tanks can inch forward mm -hmm. to gain position. Um, it is a very old way of playing TDT in Starcraft One, which is a much uh, less fluid matchup. Once you get a position, it's very hard to break. But I mean, Ty brings it in. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh my god, he just did four Yamatos to kill off the command center and jumped out immediately. You know, one of the questions that we don't ever end up asking ourselves uh, is, for instance, well, how many Yamatos does it take to just see him the CC? Yeah, is he, yes. is he lining them up? I'm like, hmm. oh, wait. It's a big oh, kill. Yeah, that sucks. Oh my, right? yeah. oh my god. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, he's killing bases. He's Yamatoing everything. His BCs are all still alive at this point. T.Y. Right now, you here, beautiful like, man. Pure doesn't have the economy to even support all the factories. Yeah, I don't know how Red's gonna come back. There's no way he can come back. Unless Blue just makes a big fumble. Just... But he's pretty much in trouble. Red's pretty much dead this game. That is such a unique build. Such a unique build. Maybe I should try it next time, but... Uh... It's so hard when you watch these guys play. It's so hard to really mimic the way they're playing. It just you can't. I mean, you can, but this it's too hard for a person who doesn't take this as their career. You know what I mean? Yeah, BCs are slow when they when you right click them around, but if you need to warp them, they can literally go anywhere. So teleporting is just pancakes really good, by the way, guys. Uh, the thing about the Cyclones is that right now T.Y. has gained such a lead that even having this little, I think as you said, kind of a mobile mech army, that's cool and all, but uh, the truth is that now T.Y. has exceeded a ground army uh, power here as well. Are we going to have another Yamato here? I guess it's going to go to Cyclones <laughs> and, well, if there's only a couple there, you can Yamato those down, kill off SCVs as much as you want, probably even kill the command center to be honest. BC's dealing so much damage so quickly. Yeah, they are. And look at this, T.Y. is just, he's moving in. He's dead, dude. Sorry, Red's so dead. So many mech units here. Yeah, I think we're just a few more minutes, uh, a few more minutes of this game here before we get to the closing point here. I mean, right now, economically, here is in shambles here. Yeah. This supplies it, except that's it. GG. Mm. What a game. T.Y. takes game number one. What a game. On an unusual map. All right. In a completely unique that was the first game of StarCraft. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Anyways. If you stuck around this long, congratulations, I appreciate that, because this is one of the things that I just love to watch. StarCraft is such a great game to just enjoy when you're having breakfast, lunch, coffee, don't matter. You're just watching two people with extraordinary video game skills compete against each other and outwit each other. So I'm going to try to continue to watch the rest of this, but you don't have to stick around. So stick around though for when we go hiking, because today we will be going to Snow Lake. It'd be a fun place to go. Um, well, it's supposed to rain today. It's uh, let me just. It's supposed to rain today. Have some like thunderstorms around one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. But let's just see. I mean, right now, weather looks pretty good. But Seattle, I mean, the weather always changes, right? Fucking Seattle. All right, see in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I was doing the thirty-one days of masculinity program? I know I kind of put it on a pause, but let's get back onto it. So yesterday I did day eleven. Day eleven was about negative visualization. So today it's also kind of negative visualization, okay? Sort of. It's titled Evening Ruminations, and it basically talks about how we should just let things go and not have have these negative energies held on to us, right? I mean, the, you, you remember the story? How the story go? Gosh darn it. It goes something like this, right? He wrote it down here. Holding on to a grudge is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die, right? We've all heard that saying before. And so let me just kind of break it down here. So for example, things like work. There are quite a few men out there who hate their job. They regret taking it and now feel trapped, anchored to the paycheck. Brothers or sisters, listen to me now. Your company is designed to get the maximum amount of work out of you and pay as little compensation to you as possible. You owe that business nothing. 
You should always have resumes ready to go on your computer and you should always, always be looking to either raise your level of responsibility and pay or find a position which will set you up for greater life satisfaction. I totally believe this is true, right? All right, let's keep going. The next one, cheating. Ooh, big one, cheating. Maybe you cheated or maybe your girl did. Whatever happened, you're still together. If you decided to take her back, then you decided, you decided that you wanted her in your life more than you cared about her insurrection. Sorry, indiscretion. Damn fob. You are no longer allowed to hold it over her head. If you, if you took her back, then guilting her to submit to you will never provide you with that powerful feeling which comes from truly earning the submission of another. If you feel that need to hold it over her head, instead, you should just end the relationship. <laughs> totally fucking agree, right? How many people are like, you cheated on me, you owe me something. Yeah, no. Let's keep going. If you cannot get over what she did, then just let her go or let him go. There are other women out there, women who've never cheated on you and they can provide you with a great time without you having a flashback to how she was with another man when she was with you. You've got to get over it or, or get out of the relationship. Constantly returning to the affair will erode the joy and love that grudge will kill you. The same applies if you cheated and she keeps bringing it up, right? Makes sense. It has to end. That means the relationship has to end or the two of you have to come to terms with no longer identifying with what happened and instead choosing to work together to reach a place where it is nothing more than a memory. Mm. Well written. All right, the last one. Let's talk about regrets. Ooh, let's, let's see what this one has to say. Too many men talk about how they used to be somebody. This obsession with the glory days stems back from the lack of being somebody currently. I don't talk of my high school football days, nor do I talk of my Navy days, because those are things I did. But I've got plenty more I'm doing now, which, would, which could be discussed. Maybe you got married too young, maybe you're too beta, and it ruined a relationship, beta. Maybe you missed your big shot at the pro because you got a DUI. Whatever your recurrent regret is, you've got to let it go. You know what it is, that one fucking thought which pops up when you're feeling low and when you're alone? That thought that makes you daydream about how different your life would be if it had gone the other way. Find that thought and destroy it with your masculine confidence urgh, and power that lets you know that you are right now the best fucking you that there ever will be. You are here. You're now. If you don't get over it, it will kill you. All right, that sounds like fun for a day 12. So basically the whole concept is just let things go, right? Don't hold on to grudges, don't hold on to past absences, absent, obscenities, whatever the freaking word is. So anyways, yeah, day 12 is pretty easy, nothing to really gloat and try about, but yeah, let things go, let it go, can't hold me back anymore. All right, let's get ready to go hiking, guys. Here we are at the Great Alpantel. Sorry, what were you saying? I'm gonna be really cold. I'm gonna dress for this. I'm already cold. Are you really cold? Well, I did bring a jacket for you. So, here we are at the uh, Snow Lake Mountain. I am so excited. I get to fly my drone at a ski resort. Sort of. Anyways, I came here last time actually in January and this was my first, my first place that I went snowshoeing. That's right. fell in love with it. Fell in love with it. And so, it's a beautiful day and I hope to God, God, it doesn't rain. It was raining a little earlier when we were getting here, so I'm hoping it kind of passes, please. And by the way, restaurants were open in Seattle, in Bellevue, some parts at least. So I'm looking forward to having some normalcy again. We were sitting down, or not sitting down, we were driving down uh, Main Street in Bellevue, and people were just sitting outside. People were sitting outside, no mask, nothing, just eating. Just eating as if nothing of this shit ever happened. That's where we are. That's our girl. You see the sad face? Sad face? Mm. Mm. So, if you see behind me, we came ill prepared. We came ill prepared. How can I? We didn't bring the proper shoes. We have no micro spikes. We have no snow chains. Snow chains, duh. Snowshoes. And we don't want to. Let me flip this around again. Yeah. So, 
we're just gonna start heading back down because we don't want to risk breaking an ankle, unfortunately. So, and it's kind of raining. Look at that. Mm. Anyways. Kids are crying. Kids are crying, dogs are crying. That's Lily, Lily. Yeah, Lily, the monster. She's anxious and wants to get back down. So, okay. Until then, we'll have to do Snow, snow Lake next time, all right? Sorry.